Welcome back to Math 103. This is video number 15 on apportionment. It turns out, after we do a little bit of trial and error, that a modified quota of 420,000 works in this example, which is to say that when you compute modified quotas using 420,000 as modified divisor, and you take the modified lower quotas and sum them up, they do sum to exactly 38. So in this particular problem, the given number of seats was 38, and so that's the number that we have to add up to in the end. Great, so 420,000 does succeed in producing the correct number of seats. So why are we looking at these particular examples? I just had you look at 37 seats and then at 38 seats for the same population. So the reason for this was to see if the Alabama paradox afflicts the Jefferson apportionment as it did the Hamilton apportionment. Remember the Alabama paradox we saw earlier in the Hamilton apportionment for this very example, we saw that the effect of going from 37 seats to 38 seats was to take one seat away from Maine and end up giving one to Massachusetts and one to Connecticut. Right? You would have thought that if the only thing you're changing is the number of seats, if all you're doing is adding one seat, you might have thought that, okay, well, everyone will stay the same, and one state will get that one extra seat, but nobody would lose any. The fact that this example shows Maine losing one seat illustrates that Hamilton's method is vulnerable to what we call the Alabama paradox. So is Jefferson's method vulnerable to the same? Actually, no. So this is good news about Jefferson's method, not only in this particular example where you see that Maine stays steady at four seats, Massachusetts already had 16 seats and it stays steady, Connecticut does indeed gain one seat, right? So it's not just in this particular example, but in general, Jefferson apportionments do not cause the Alabama paradox to appear. Jefferson's method is not vulnerable to the Alabama paradox. Great, so that's the good news. And you've been taking this course long enough to know that as soon as I say, that's the good news, oh, you know what's coming next. Recall what it meant to violate the quota rule. The quota rule said that no state should be apportioned fewer than its lower quota of seats. It should not also not be apportioned more than its upper quota of seats. So let's look carefully at the following example. 225 seats are apportioned using Jefferson's method. We have four states, let's call them A, B, C, and D. Here are their populations. This could be in millions of people, let's say. Uh, here are their standard quotas. And when we use a modified divisor of 7.65, here are their modified quotas. In this column, we have the Jefferson apportionment of these 225 seats, right? If you add them up, they do indeed add up to 225. So Jefferson's method does make these, the number of seats, apportioned to each of the states. And we ask, is there a quota rule violation in this example? Right? Pause and look carefully at whether there is a quota rule violation in this example. The answer is that yes, there is a quota rule violation in this example. Now, the reason for this, why does this count as a quota rule violation? These 125 seats that Jefferson is giving state B, these 125 seats are greater than the upper quota for state B. The standard quota was 123 point something, and therefore the upper quota is 124. Jefferson is violating the quota rule as a result. Now, now, it's a common confusion in this subject for students to say, wait a minute, 125.1 was the modified quota. We're doing Jefferson's method here. Isn't the modified quota the one that we care about? Isn't 125 perfectly okay as a number of seats to give out with respect to this modified quota? Ah, but the quota rule is expressed in terms of the lower and upper quotas. That means in relation to the standard quota. Okay? The quota rule is looking at the standard quota. The Jefferson's apportionment here, the Jefferson apportionment is giving out too many seats with respect to that upper quota. So that's the bad news. Jefferson's method sometimes violates the quota rule. And that concludes our discussion of Jefferson's method.